Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to deal to heal teas That's deal to heal teas. Get some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas dot my shopify dot com. Hey guys, this is Ernest James, host of the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And I got a question to ask you. Could you buy me a cheeseburger? Better yet, could you buy me a value meal? Yes? Well, guess what? I don't need a value meal. However, for the cost of a value meal, you can support this podcast to keep us on the air. Just go to Patreon slash Deal to Heal podcast and choose any one of the three tiers that's available. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, go to Cash App. And make a donation to dollar sign E James, the number 418. Make a one time donation to the Cash App, or again, go to Patreon to support this podcast and keep us on the air. Thanks in advance. Be blessed. Welcome to Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, to heal, and to fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in uh, to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And if you haven't already, make sure that you listen, like, subscribe, and share to our podcast on all of our social media uh, platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. We own all of them. Just look us up. Uh, Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, and you will find us there. Uh, and just uh, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with somebody, right? Share it to your friends and loved ones to let them know that we're here bringing a message of hope and healing uh, to our listeners, right? And also uh, to the listeners, I'm going to tell you guys how you can win $100 from the podcast. Um, and it's not going to cost you nothing, but you have to stay until the end to get that information, right? Okay, so now today, uh, our next uh, segment is our product of the week. So our product of the week is our uh, T-shirt that says, it's our purpose, purpose T-shirt. It says purpose, um, make sure you guys can see it. It says purpose, God will reveal it. You must fulfill it. So when we're looking for our purpose and and God reveals our purpose to us, what our purpose is, uh, he doesn't give us a blueprint or a roadmap. He just gives us the end uh, destination that we have to make, do the work to bring it into fruition. So that T-shirt can be found on our uh, uh, website, which is dealtoheeltees.myshopify.com. You can find it there. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tee and be inspired all day. That is our hook. I hope you guys like it so we can do that. Um, and please support the cop podcast because we are a self-sustained uh, podcast. And the way that we keep ourselves on the air is with your support and by giving you products which you can support, which you can buy, or follow us on uh, our Patreon. You can go to Patreon and click a tier uh, that you find that you uh, find us to your liking in order to support us that way, or make a one-time donation through Cash App at E James uh, four one eight on Cash App. Um, yeah, so that's that. 
So we're going to jump right in today. Just like any other day, we are blessed with a guest. Ms. Johnson, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How are you? I am good. I am good. First of all, let me say thank you for being on. Uh, you could have been doing anything else, but you're here with us, uh, with me and my listeners, and we definitely appreciate it. And I wanted you to know that up front. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So let's jump right into it. So do me a favor, introduce yourself uh, to my listeners and tell us who you are and what it is that you do. Awesome. Thank you again for having me tonight. I'm Jaquita Zachary Johnson, and I wear many, many, many hats. Um, however, I am a children's book author of five books right now. I'm so excited about that. And just in, in being an author, it gives you so many other platforms and so many other outlets. And so some of the other things that I do, I am an influencer and plus size model. I am currently the title holder for Miss Georgia, um, plus Georgia, and also Miss Curvy Atlanta. So those are two things I'm absolutely proud of, our nationals for um, Miss Plus Georgia will be in May, and so be rooting for me with that as well. And so, like I also said, you know, model, um, model, and also doing a little bit of influencing. And my pretty book, I am pretty. We also have what's called pretty parties, and so that's where we go parties with an acronym pretty and it stands for several different things and so the client can choose what type of party they would like to have i also have books brains and beauty that i do for young ladies where we write books we become entrepreneurs we learn about marketing and such so that's just a little bit and i also have a nine to five i'm a serial entrepreneur and just like you i have to support my own stuff often for now big things are coming mm -hmm. um so i am also a behavior intervention specialist here in georgia for a local school district and i absolutely love it talking about purpose and walking in it i get the opportunity to do that every day and get paid for it so i'm so excited about um being able to touch children's lives and young people's lives and in that area of behavior and social emotional learning I love it. I love it. So let's let's go back, right? Let's go back uh, a little bit because uh, <laughs> you said a lot of stuff, and we're gonna we're gonna, touch on, we're gonna touch on some of it. But that is the uh, definition, should I say, of who you are today, right? Yeah. But there's always a journey before the journey to get us to where we are, right? So tell us a little bit about the journey of who you were uh, before you became this confident woman that just zo exude all this excellence, you know, in the school and in, in your nine to five and on the, as an entrepreneur, you know, like that's a lot of hats and, and you, you're wearing it well, but I'm sure there was a journey to get to this point, right? So tell me, yeah. who are you beforehand and what was kind of your own uh, journey that you had to go through to overcome and become the person that you are today? Definitely, definitely. It's always a journey. So um, currently I am 45 years old, young, 45 young, and I can still remember when I was five years old in the kindergarten. OK, and that's where all of my good the bubbly self-confidence was absolutely crushed um, because I used to talk a lot in class. Right. And I had these teachers that were bullies. And instead of, you know, just kind of disciplining me in certain ways, they use a lot of corporal punishment, you know, growing up in the 80s and here in Atlanta. And um, I would have to do things like touch my toes and all that kind of stuff. I've always been a big girl. And so after about five minutes, I start shaking and just doing other things that would have me holding books and one foot up. And, you know, and so they would just kind of make fun of me. Like, look at you. You're so fat. You can't do this. You can't do that. I remember coming to school. I thought I was so cute in my little pink mini skirt, you know. And um, my teacher said, I can't believe your mama let you, you know, wear this. She know you're too big to wear this. You're too fat to have this outfit on. And so my whole, all my little confidence were crushed. So I began to listen to my teachers saying all, all these different things. Um, my mother wasn't a single, a single mother, but my dad was an addict, a functional addict. So, um, you know, both of them worked for the state of Georgia and just 
we I have two other sisters, I have two sisters, and so our hair would get done on Sunday, you know, washing the hair and all that kind of stuff. So honestly, by Wednesday and just life happening, our hair may be a mess. And so I can remember them, you know, talking about my mom and she ought to be ashamed of herself and just all these different things. So my like I said, my confidence began to just kind of dwindle away. I started noticing how my teachers would treat lighter skin children or kids that, you know, may have dressed differently and things of that nature. And so I began to just kind of feel bad about myself. I would go home and say, mom, I'm fat. Mom, I'm ugly. Mom, why are you married, daddy? He's so black. He's so dark. You know, all this kind of stuff. And my mom would say things like, wait a minute, where is this coming from? And honestly, I never told her, hey, I'm getting talked about at school. These were my teachers. They teaching me how to read, how to write. And of course, what they're saying must be true because these are my teachers. So I must be, I must be fat. My hair must be nappy. I may not have a good mom. You know what I'm saying? Those types of things. So every day I was having to come back, those types of things. And so as I began to get older and um, live down the street from a wonderful church, uh, I just began to let the word of God get in me, and I began to get in the word of God, and I'm like, wow, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So by the time I got in middle school, you know, I was feeling pretty okay about myself because of what the word of God said about me, and my mom used to always say, the creator don't make no junk. God don't make no junk. You better stop. How would you feel? You're talking about his creation. You're his creation. Mm-hmm. How dare you talk about, you know, those types of things. And so I remember one day we had like twins there or something along those lines um, in middle school. And um, so I had to dress like my friend. I'm thinking, Damn. you know, not to compare myself, but I'm like, I like how I look in this. You know, I have some curves. She don't really have no curves. You know, those types of things. And I began to say, it's okay. I'm different. And I'm okay with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm darker. I'm okay. I like that. I stand out. I like this about myself. And so that confidence began to grow just in understanding, okay, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous is his work and all this kind of stuff. And he knew me before I was born in my mother's womb. And so he knew I look like this. He knew I have these genetic makeups and all these different things. And so um, even my friend just began to notice, you know, okay, Jaquita, you're blossoming more, you know. And when you have confidence, you carry yourself a little bit differently, you know. And so uh, I had a really good friend, a little boyfriend back in eighth grade. And he was like, um, <laughs> he decided to call Barbizon, um School of Modeling here, like I said, here in Atlanta. And I had to go in and do all this little interview. And believe it or not, I was accepted. And so my mom, I don't know how many jobs my mama, mama had to make that happen, right? Like, I'm going to put my baby through this. And uh, and so it was an amazing experience, wonderful experience. I would begin to do live shows for um, uh, Added Dimensions and Lane, Brian and Catherine's and things of that nature. And so it was fun, but it was a lot of work, you know. And as we begin to grow, getting to high school and all of that, you know, you have more work and just, it's just beginning to be a lot. And so... Um, it helped with, to boost my confidence. Like I said, the word of God got into me. I got in the word of God and that change. And, and that's what, really what brought about the change, talking about the creator. You know, I can't, I couldn't listen to my teachers. They didn't make me. They can't speak life and, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. So I had to combat those negative thoughts that even I had about myself because I listened in, to those lies that they were saying about me. I listened to all that negativity and I began to compare myself and, well, why I can't look like her? Why my skin can't look like her? Why my hair can't look like her? You know, like her hair, you know, those types of things. And so that's been my journey. My journey has been a journey of self-acceptance, understanding, hey, I like me. I love me. I'm okay with who I am. I'm grateful the way that God made me. So that's been my journey. And 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 a wonderful journey that it is that, that you're now at this point. Um, because it's just amazing. And and it, just to go back a little bit, um, one of the things that you know when I talk to teachers, right, and, and sometimes I do as a as a speaker to you know, talk to go to schools and talk to the students, but sometimes I get to talk to the stu- uh, to the teachers also. And one of the things I tell them, first of all, I say thank you for your service. You know, because they're on the front line of a different type of war. Mm-hmm. You know, you say thank you for your service to you know our military, but mm-hmm. in this day and time, in this climate, you know, mm-hmm. our there's a war going on for the minds and hearts of our, mm-hmm. of our children. You know, so I always say thank you for your service. But I always tell them you have to be careful. Because the imprint that you put on a child can make and break them. 
Definitely. You know, even sometimes, even more than their parents, because a lot of time our teachers are spending more time with the students than the parents are, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I always talk about the three teachers that made a great difference in my life, um, especially once I got into, into high school, um, with even my confidence, because I always was shy. And even though I got a podcast now, <laughs> I don't like to talk a whole lot. With the, don't seem, uh, <laughs> don't, there's no evidence of that today. But it, it was a process uh, for it to get there because I, I always had a light voice. And so I would get made fun of for my voice because my voice was so light, which made me say, well, if I don't talk, then they won't make fun of me. You know, mm -hmm. so I kept my mouth closed, just hold my peace a lot. But there were some of my teachers that uh, just boost my confidence, you know, and it, and it wasn't even with speaking, right? But it boosts my confidence in, in other ways that made me feel so good about myself that I was like, look, I can talk. You know, because I'm smart, you know, and I and I got these different things going for me and I begin to talk and, and you know, use my voice. And that definitely made a difference uh, in my life and even in my journey into adulthood with the things that I've been able to do. So, yeah. And, and just the same like you, sometimes, you know, those teachers who don't necessarily use their voice for good or use it in the best you know, best way that they should, yeah, you do have an, an effect on the students, you know, uh, which luckily the good outweighs the bad. And we always end up running into some other teachers that a lot of times make up for the, the information that another teacher might have might have uh, poured into you. So I'm, I'm glad, you know, and then I think, so I, I don't want to say I'm glad that you went through that. I, let me speak for myself. But I just know that some of the things that I went through also built me for what I do today, right? And so even with you, the things that you've been to, through as a child begin to uh, mold you into the beautiful, confident woman that you are today, you know? And I know you, you mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, getting into the, the pageants and things like that, and even winning, right? Which is how I came across you was from some of your pictures. I was like, oh, this is beautiful. And I began to look through your pictures and I was like, wait a minute, she's an author too? You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, I got to reach out to you. And so, you know, it just, it, uh, it just shows, you know, from the person that you are. And when we talk about confidence, you know, it's when I see you, that's all I see. Right. When I look on your page, like I said, before I even knew you as an author, you know, just looking at your pictures and, and the smile that you have. And I think, you know, your the some of the pictures you share with your family. And I'm just like, this is beautiful, you know, and to see the look on your face just exudes confidence, you know. And so when you're when you're talking to you know, uh, others, because um, I'm assuming, I know you talk to students because <laughs> that's the line of work that you went, but I'm sure there are adults like myself that are just drawn, you know, to your smile and to the confidence that you have. So when you're just encouraging, whether it's your students or other adults about confidence, what are some of the things that you just like, hey, you can look out, look out for this or, or, or do this to kind of build yourself up because, you know, by your own experience, you know, what is something that you, a lesson or something that you prepare someone to someone else, be like, yes. Yeah, right. So I think the biggest thing that we do is that we compare ourselves to other people. Mm -hmm. And you cannot compare yourself to other people. That's going to mess up your outlook on life. That's going to mess up your joy. And then, you know, we go on social media and all that kind of stuff. Nobody's posting their pain. Nobody is posting, mm -hmm. you know, the bad stuff. And even you look at families, you have no idea what's going on, you know? And so you can't compare, oh, I wish my marriage was like this marriage. No, you don't. You live your, do you, do you, and do and be the best you that you can possibly be. And that's what we have to do. Because like I said, oftentimes we start feeling bad about ourselves when we start comparing out when comparing ourselves or why I wish my house looked like their house or, you know, those types of things. And so one of the things I do is tell people not to compare themselves with other people because you can't, that's the, that's the, um, they say that that right there is what robs you of your joy, of your happiness. And so that's one of, that's been one of the biggest lessons that I have had to learn to just enjoy my journey, enjoy my journey, enjoy where I am. In, in my book, I Am Pretty, um, I was a 
with a school in Atlanta public school system. And the girls group was reading the book and doing some of the activities um, from, from the activity book that I have. And I went to speak at a school for Women's Day. And a young lady came up to me in the third grade and she said, I just want to thank you for writing your book. I said, okay, well, thank you so much. And I really appreciate that. And she says, you know, I I wanted to commit suicide. And here it is. We have a third grade. This is eight year old. Not saying I wanted to kill myself or not. I wanted to commit suicide. She said that she was being bullied. She was darker, you know, a little bit. And she said, but after I read your book, I decided just to love me. And that's what it's about. It's a simple message. I'm a very simple person, to be honest with you. Um, You know, I got a lot of degrees and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I'm just simple. I love to just break things down. And she could not have broken the message of my book. She couldn't have broken down more eloquently than that. I just decided to love me. And that's what we have to do. We can't look at this and what's going on. We have to just love us and who we are. Yeah, there are certain things that we can do to change ourselves. I can't change my skin color. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can go buy hair, take it on, put it off, those types of things. But I technically can't technically change the texture and, you know, just different things. You know, it is what it is. And so we have to just love and accept ourselves for who we are and become the best us that we can be. And one thing we cannot do because it does not help us is put ourselves down. If I'm constantly saying, dang, I hate I'm so fat, but I'm not doing anything about it. That's not helping. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to accept, love yourself, do what you got to do to be the best you you have to be. But putting yourself down and especially not doing anything about it is not helping. So don't compare yourself and just accept and love who you are and become the best that you can become. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that 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 message, first of all, don't compare yourself. That's the whole thing within itself, especially with the younger generation, because they are bombarded with these images that people put forth. And like you said, people are not, they're putting forth their high, their high reels, you know, into the highlights of what's going on in their, in their lives and within their families. So they're not really showing you the behind the scenes and the real stuff that they deal with on a day-to-day basis. But unfortunately our children are watching and that's all they see and they just believe it. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, I need to live up to that, you know, and it's not real. I remember having a conversation with my daughter uh, my daughter's going to be uh, 20. <laughs> She's going to be 20, you know, in a, in a couple months, you know. But I remember a while back when she graduated from high school and, you know, she was like, she called me one day and I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, how you feeling? And she's like, you know, I'm OK, but I'm, you know, I'm looking at this and that and, and I don't have a car yet and I don't have a job and I don't, you know. And I said, wait a minute, you just graduated. You know what right. I mean? I'm like, I, I love the ambition, but slow down. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, you're, you're comparing yourself with other people and you don't have to do that. You was right. smart, beautiful young girl, uh, honor roll student. You know what I mean? I'm like, you have all this stuff. Take your time. And I'm like, I'm not rushing you, but don't start getting down on yourself because of uh, something that you see somebody else have. And so you think you should be what they are or you should be who they are. You should have what they have. Like, you know, just brace yourself a little bit, you know. And so we start talking about that that confidence and that not um, comparing ourselves to other people. It comes down to how we feel about ourselves, you know, and that self-love. And I think a lot of times, uh, especially with our younger generation, they don't have that. And I've been having this conversation a lot. And it's like, they have, I think they, I think this is my own opinion. I think they value because they are bombarded with so many other people's opinion that they start yes. to value everybody else's opinion of them over their own, you know? Right. So they're looking at everybody else's opinion and what this person think and what this person have and what this person says I should be or what, you know, this should look like or what they consider cool and that so much so they forget their own voice and they stop saying, well, how do I feel about myself? You know, and I think it it, it, it starts young, but it goes even into adulthood because, you know, I was 20, oh, I wasn't even in my 20s. I, this was just a couple of years ago where I really started to get into uh, our personal development you know, mm-hmm. things like that yeah. and, and getting to know myself for who I am outside of being a father, outside of being a husband, you know. And so mm-hmm. I was able to find out some things about myself like, oh, 
you know, some things was confirmed that I that I thought about myself, but some things was like new information. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think yeah. our, our students don't necessarily have that. And I think if we, and that's one of the things that I do as a speaker, going into the schools to really start pushing our students to get into some self-development and begin to learn right. more about themselves. Right. And then they can, you know, love themselves for who they are. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and and you're right. It does. It starts young and it, and it starts with parents speaking good things into their children, letting them be confident. One of the things that I was allowed to do is I was allowed to ask questions. I know sometimes, you know, you sit over there, you're a child, you know, but I was allowed to ask questions. And I think that's so important because that helped me as an adult, you know, because I, I honestly, I, I'll tell my friend in a minute, I'm not going to be a ride or die. I'm going, what, what we ride into, mm-hmm. why is death, <laughs> you know, you know, one of those, because I'm going to have to ask some questions. I'm not just going to, you know, be okay with certain things. And so in working with my students, I try and teach them to, to stop and think. And, you know, and these are skills that we have to learn even at an early age. I remember I had one student, middle school student, and he was talking about how he had to he had to fight. Um, something had happened and he know that he couldn't go home without fighting. And he got it, you know, that's fine, sweetie. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop you from fighting, but let's let's talk about it, you know. So Tell me what's going to happen if you fight. And, you know, he said, oh, I may get suspended. I may, you know, this may happen. You know, okay, then that's not a problem. You know, you still think that's okay. And he's like, yeah. And I said, so let's talk about what's going to happen if you lose the fight, right? And he's like, hold up. I ain't thought about that. You know, I said, well, let's talk about it, you know? And so we talked about the bad things, you know, the same situation. Oh, I still probably may get in trouble by my dad because I shouldn't be trying to, you know, lose in fights or that now they're going to talk about me because, you know, and so we talked about different things he can do other than fighting. Let's talk. Let's talk. So some of these skills just kind of have to be learned. Um, and, and that's why I'm grateful I get to do what I do on a day-to-day basis because some of our kids don't have tools in their toolbox. All he knew mm-hmm. was to fight. What else can you do? nothing all i can do is fight and that's all he knew and so it's so important for us to instill in our children to 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 give them a voice to allow them to um you know be who they are but ask questions of them as well help them to stop and think about things we're so busy sometimes and on the phone and all that kind of stuff i have a little nephew and um my sister technically is raising her grandson who is my nephew but we talk all the time and she's like i pick you up from school what do you mean you telling auntie this and you know and you're telling her i just saw you i didn't know that happened because i take time you know she's busy probably on the phone doing this doing that but i take time to stop and listen to what he has to say and what's going on i ask questions so how was your day it was okay so what does okay mean you know, what does okay look like what does okay day look like them the process parents that works person that person man whatever that made me feel as if I was pretty he would tell me you're so pretty oh I love your hands Jaquita you can be a hand model and he's the first person that made me feel that way so when a when a guy came along and said you know oh you did oh okay thanks so much it didn't go to my head or I didn't fall in love because my dad had already told me this. This is not new information to me, you know? And so it's just kind of one of those things that we need to begin to speak life into our students, into our I say students, into our children yeah. and help them process. Honestly, I work with adults as well. They're not the only ones that's comparing themselves. We have adults that don't feel good about themselves. We, you know, got people going off getting BBLs and dying and doing all kind of stuff because they too are looking at social media, looking at things that people perceive to be beautiful and they want to change themselves and all of that kind of stuff. So it's not just our young people, it's everybody as a whole. And we got to understand that we can't, you know, compare ourselves. It's okay if you want to change your body, do what you have to do, not a problem. But make sure it's coming from a good place and not a place of you trying to do something for someone else, you know, or for right. someone else's acknowledgement or to make somebody notice you. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's like you said, uh, two, two things I want to mention. First of all, going back to, you know, your father speaking life into you. You know, I know one of the things that we talked about 
uh, a little bit before we um, start recording was you had asked me about my books and one of the books that I have is called The Core Four, which is the four values, the four core values that every father should instill in, in his daughter. And that's one of the things is the affirmation. You know, that's one of the things that you get from your father being, you know, being around or being in your life. And a lot of times I don't necessarily say father. I say father figure because it doesn't necessarily have to be your father, you know. But as long as there is a father figure who loves you enough to take out the time and invest in you, you know, um, that you still need those those values. You know, yeah. someone to speak life until you speak affirmation into you. And it goes into our, ser- our self-worth, you know. And, and like we said, unfortunately... You know, just in some of our homes, not just saying that, you know, some of our homes is we don't have the fathers. That's one issue. But even for some of our homes with the adults and we talk talking about, you know, talking to the children about, you know, uh, their own self-worth and, the, and right. self-love. But if their parents didn't grow up with it, you know, the parents, are, like you said, the parents are still struggling with it. You know, and that's why I like to have uh, people on, guests on, who talk about self-love and self-worth. You know, who are you? What are you worth? You know, knowing your own worth. Because it's not just the kids. Because I don't really, I mean, I hope it is some kids that listen to my podcast. But I think it's more so for the adults. But I know it's a message that our our adults need. Because our adults are still, you know, uh, some, I'm one year older than you. I'm 46 at this time. And so, you know what I mean? Just... Even in in my age group, our age group, I guess, there are still some that you be looking at sometimes just have to shake your head, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And, and so I know I have some some friends and, and family. I look at them sometimes and they look like they kids. And I'm just like, you are come on now, you know. But it's that inner work to be able to know who you are, you know, outside of social media, outside of someone else you know, expectation and trying to make yourself or present yourself as someone or someone else's version of you, you know, because you don't know your own self-worth and your own self-love. And so I think that's very important that we, you know, even as adults, that we work on that. And so that's that's one of the things I I love about your books, right? And we're going to talk about the books. And and one of the things I want to talk about, because I I know you mentioned it a little earlier, I think you said you have, uh, when you do events, you have acronyms and you can choose the acronyms. We're going to get into that because I know if you're a long time listener of the podcast, then you know I love acronyms. That's like one of my things, right? So we're going to get into that. But I think your books is it's good for any age, right? You know, yeah. it may be aimed at children, but I think it's good for any age because because good information is just good information, period. You know, so let's talk a little bit about about your books. Uh, you can talk about as many of them as you want, um, but I want to. I definitely want to talk about I Am Pretty because that was the first one that I I seen and it kind of resonated with me. So let's start there. But just tell tell us a little bit about your books and the, and the messages that each one brings. Okay. Well, I know we're going to talk about I'm pretty, but I cannot, I'll be remiss if I don't talk about this one. This is my first one, Gary the Great Gator. And I was a second grade teacher, um, former educator, second grade teacher. And I could not find any books um, to help my students with the greater than and less than symbol was not out there. And so I said, hey, I'll write one. Long story short, I kept getting laid off and all that kind of stuff. And so I decided to go on ahead and put it in print form. Um, and it's been amazing. It gave me the platform. I became a writing coach. Of course, other educators, hey, I got a story. Can you help me with that? So um, I began to become a behavior intervention specialist. From there, I got the book, I Am Pretty. I was running into a lot of girls that was just bullies and mean and just ugly acting. And as I began to sit down and talk with them and meet with their parents, even, um, I discovered that a lot of them didn't love who they were. And so one of the things that they try and do is put other girls down to make themselves feel better. And that's one of the things that we try and do sometimes, you know, that does not work. Hey, if, if I try to demean you and shine a light on, on some of your flaws, maybe other people won't see my flaws. Right. And so I, I knew that I had to write a book to help girls understand what true prettiness is. And I know it talks about I am pretty, but if you keep looking at it, it says I am pretty brave, awesome, smart, kind. It's on the book. Don't let the cover fool you. Um, Because that's what we're talking about. That true prettiness comes from who we are, our character. 
And so, of course, it gives homage to loving the skin that you're in and all the pretty attributes about you outwardly. But basically, it goes into, I know, you know, that being pretty starts from within our heart and being pretty kind, be pretty brave, be pretty, you know, all these different things. And so we talk about that. And that's what I Am Pretty is about. I target to um, the kindergarten to, to fifth grade age because it is a storybook. But like you said, women get the book. Um, I had a group of friends that said, girl, read us that book. Let's do our activities. I'm also an art therapist as well. And so when we do the pretty parties, most of the time we're going to do some form of art therapy. And so we use art, like you said, to bring healing and all of that. And so in working with um, my middle schoolers and even high schoolers, you know, hey, Miss Hacker, we like this, but you got something for us. So that came about the activity book. And so it has the affirmations in there and all of that and just um, fun, little cute little activities, journal prompts and all of that to help them, but also to build their self-esteem and to build their confidence. And once again, the message that true prettiness comes from within this year, well, 2022, I um, published a book for boys because, of course, moms and dad. Wait a minute, Ms. Zachary, do you have anything for the boys? And I do. I have a boys book. And um, it's where I'm doing my book signing in March. Um, but it's already out on Amazon. Just do a search for Jaquita Zachary Johnson. You'll see all my books come up. And um, it is Life Lessons for Boys. It's amazing. And it goes on talking about the asking of the questions and believing in yourself. And so it's just little nuggets that I've learned throughout life. And I see a lot of the boys that I work with just not utilizing some of those skills. And so it also talks about just be who you are. And so that's a great one. Of course, it also has an activity book that go along with it. So it has the coloring. It has those same um, A to Z life skills. And that's the name of that one, A to Z, um, Life Lessons uh, for Children. And so it's just, it's just been an amazing journey. Like the crazy part about all of this is that when I got to college, um, passing reading was, it was not a problem. Reading comprehension, I was fine colors. Of course, I don't, I, I'm just going to be honest for me. I don't know anybody that did not have to take remedial math. Okay. And so of course I had to, but I also had to do writing. I could not pass the writing competency test for the state of Georgia to get out of college. Like I had finished school, but I could not pass. Long story short, they just kind of deemed me. Um, I had to end up um, doing something with disability. And basically they said that I was in special education in the area of writing in ELA. And um, so for me to be a writer and an author and doing all of this is absolutely, absolutely a God thing. Absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, the enemy trying to silence our voice. I heard you say that you didn't like to talk. And here it is. You had a whole podcast. Kudos to you for not letting any, you know, any of your um, things that you feel less than stop you from your purpose and walking in it. And so that's an absolute blessing. And that's how I had to be. And that's how. That's 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 what my books are about. That's what happened in the, this journey that I'm on. And what a journey it is! Uh, definitely <laughs> wonderful. Um, give me a give me a couple of acro acronyms though. Give me a couple of acronyms. Okay. So with the pretty party, and so um, with the pretty party, P stands for poise. Of course, if you want us to focus on being poised, because with the pretty party, we come, we do decorations, we do all that kind of stuff. We read the book, it may be my book, it may be somebody else's book, but we have the pink carpet, you walk the pink carpet. So poised, so we can work on that. I'm also an etiquette coach as well. So R stands for respect. It may not necessarily be a girl's party. It may be, hey, Miss Zachary, we need you to come in our youth group. Let's talk about respect today. Let's, you know, talk about those things. Another E is for entrepreneurship. And so, of course... I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I have the opportunity to work with young people and developing their businesses. We're looking at branding. We're looking at marketing and how we do on all those types of things. And so those are some of the other um, youth development is for the why. Yearning for more is um, one of the whys. Go on my website, jaquita.com. Look it up. You'll see all of those things and what those acronyms um, stand for. So with the book, it's not necessarily... The acronyms for the word pretty. I do have um, a good friend, Sonia, who actually um, hosted my book signing for young people. And she did a review on Amazon and she got a whole um, acronym thing. And so she has actually written a book for women 
using the pretty acronym. So look her up, Sanya Adams. And um, so, so that's about what for my acronym. It is for the pretty party helping you decide where you want to focus. That's amazing. That's amazing. We might have to have your have your friend on here too and have her yes. talk about her work. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um I'm so happy that you that you came on. I uh, definitely have enjoyed this this conversation. Um, I want you to leave us with a last word. I'll let you have the last word. I leave us with a word of uh, advice or inspiration. Have you see fit? Uh, definitely with your um, social media handles and where we can uh, work with you mm -hmm. and how the audience can connect with you. Um, and find the books. So I'll give you a second to think about that while you're thinking about it. Uh, to my listeners, first of all, um, I told you guys, let me look at my little thing here. I told you guys that I would tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast and you can win $100 from the podcast by entering our super subscriber contest. And what that means is that you must subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our podcast on Spotify then text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730. That's 866-326-0730 to qualify to win $100. The con uh, contest is ongoing and is random. Once you end, you end with me. You can win at any time. Uh, again, that's to, to win $100 from our super subscriber contest. You must subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, our podcast on Spotify. Then text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730 to qualify. All right. And also, guys, I want you guys to be on the lookout for our website. You definitely want to check out our website at DealHill.com field.org that is my personal website on there you have information about myself about the workshops that we have uh about the having me come in as a speaker to be a speaker or to lead a workshop at your organization or school as well as information about the podcast and then go to uh ebooks by ejames.com we talked about our ebooks a little bit today um there are three ebooks that's available right now and more to come I made that real simple ebooks by ejames.com make sure you guys go and check that out so again miss johnson thank you so very much for being on thank you for gracing us with your beauty your beautiful smile and your confidence which just blows even through <laughs> even through the <laughs> podcast as we're talking right now and i really appreciate you being here i let you have the last word the floor is yours well, I know you like the acronym, so I had to make sure that I, I did it justice, right? And so for our with our pretty parties and just period, and when you come in and invite me in, and we, you know, um, m most of the topics that I talk about and deal with deals with the pretty. So when we look at the first P, it talks about being poised. That's our character development, of course, self esteem, and then we have respectful, and we look at the, you know being respectful to other people and also respectful to yourselves, okay? Because sometimes we don't understand our worth right and so when we don't understand our worth we don't respect ourselves right and if we don't know who we are it's real hard for us to respect other people then i have my e for etiquette and that's simply the social graces i love you know telling the young ladies how we're supposed to sit what spoon what knife what fork those types of things and then we have the t for talent development and we talk about setting goals and how to motivate our students. And then we have thinking and the way we think. I told you talking about battling those negative thoughts. And so proper decision making also is one of those things that I look at when we're talking about that T for thinking. And then lastly, when we yearn for more, that's our entrepreneurship. OK, and so that's what it is with our acronyms. Um, when you decide to either book me or book a pretty party, those are the things that we're looking at. And those are the things that I basically focus on. But tonight we've been just kind of talking about purpose, right? And I love that. I love that you found your purpose and you're walking in your purpose. I'm grateful that I get to walk and live out my purpose every day. But even as a writer, I never saw myself being an author because it was a struggle. You know, I always journal, but um, it takes a lot of discipline when you become an, a writer or an author. And so I just want to encourage people that they have a story within them. And so go ahead, sit down, do what you have to do, right? I don't care if there's a million and one girl books out there. It's not your girl book. 
We have to hear from you. You have something that nobody else can say other than you. So I want to encourage your listeners, go on ahead, just do it. Write that book, get that story out. Start, start. Don't let the start stop you, right? Because you got to start. It may take a while. It may not take a while, but get it out. Even after you get it out, you may see, darn, I may have this error that it's okay. You can always go back and complete it or go back and change it, have another edition, but just get that book out. We need to hear from you. You have a story to tell and we need to hear it. Just like this story saved that little girl's life. If I just wrote this just for her to love who she is so she wouldn't take herself out, that was enough for me. But you have a story to tell as well and we need to hear it. So I want to encourage your listeners to just do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where can they find you and get your books? Okay. You can find me, like I said, on Amazon. That's the best place. My books are sold wherever books. That's Target.com. That's Walmart, Barnes & Noble, all of that. So um, wherever books are sold, the books are there. But the easiest place to find them is definitely, of course, you can go to Jaquita.com. That's my name. Um, so if you want it signed, of course, go there to me. But if you say, hey, I just want the good content. I just want the book. Please go to Amazon. Just type in Jaquita Zachary Johnson. All the books that come up and you'll be blessed. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. <laughs> to my listeners, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, again, this is the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And our mission is to help people to deal, to heal, and to fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. So until next week, you guys be blessed. Thank you. Hey guys, I know you're enjoying the podcast. However, don't forget to join our text line at 866 326 0730. That's 866-326-0730 in order to receive text messages with new events and things that is going on and new episodes as they release. All right. See you in a minute. Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to Deal to Heal Teas.myshopify.com. Remember, our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for listening.